Hello and welcome to Insight. I am Elizabeth Omori. The celebration of Eid al-Adha is to commemorate Prophet Ibrahim's devotion to Allah and his readiness to sacrifice his son, Ismail. At the very point of sacrifice, God replaced Ismail with Aram, which was to be slaughtered in place of his son. This command from Allah was a test of Prophet Ibrahim's willingness and commitment to obey his Lord's command without questions. In Islam, the act of sacrifice is the symbol of a Muslim's readiness to lay down his or her life and sacrifice all interests and desires in the course of truth. Today, we will examine this principle as it relates to the human life, worship and nation building. Recently, world leaders, climate change experts and heads of international organizations gathered in Paris, France for the 2023 Finance Summit to seek better responses to tackle poverty and climate change issues by reshaping the global finance system. At the summit, an agreement was reached to increase development financing to developing countries. We will also analyze the sidelines of the global event. So, stay with us on Insights. I'm fascinated with the discourse on national monuments and assets and how much is being done to preserve and Look into the language issue. Thing. We have turned English to become like a pride value in our own cultural values. It's not cash transfer. It's not a COVID-19. Invasion 1897 was a deliberate Deliberate you know, many of these people come into the urban areas now. These and applications, um, there are terms and conditions. That of course, mean, um, it is the union of uh, two people, a man and a woman coming together. My name is Nambi Odipo. And I'm Elizabeth Omori. Educational deprivation is not the end of the world. Agencies and stakeholders to proactively tackle these challenges. We know. Women in most countries of the world constitute about 50% of registered voters. Kevin Williams reporting for Deadline 360. In Jaws, Caleb Gochin, Deadline 360. Naja Deadline 360. Shidi Okrafo. For Deadline 360. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye. Reporting for Deadline Trees. I am Omosola Omojola. Thanks for tuning in. The Feast of Sacrifice dates from the historic event when Prophet Ibrahim was commanded by God in a form of a vision to sacrifice his son. Ismail. But while he was in the act of sacrificing his son, God provided a ram for the sacrifice. The story is mentioned in chapter 37 of the Holy Quran. Idil Adha enjoys special significance because the day of sacrifice marks the climax of Hajj or pilgrimage, the fifth pillar of Islam. Our focus on the segment is on the principle of sacrifice and my guest Ustaz Yaya Garba Al Yolawi, Chief Imam, Area 10 Mosque, Abuja, will speak to us. Ustaz, thank you so much for joining us on Insights. Thank you, and God bless you. All right, let's begin with the spiritual essence of the festival of sacrifice. Could you enlighten us? Uh, Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala Rasulullah, summa The significance of uh, of sacrifice, the significance of giving sacrifice. You see, when we are talking about the significance or the importance of giving sacrifice, as we all know, it has been traced back to history of Prophet Ibrahim salam, and his son Ismail, where he said, Ya bunay inni ara fil manami anni al fanzur maza tara. The father, that is Prophet Ibrahim, says, I have been seen in my dream, in my, yes, in my dreaming, that Allah SWT is asking me to slaughter you. Look at the reply from the son. He said, yeah, Do whatever you ask, you are commanded. Strategy, strategy, inshallah. He's 
reply with a complete submission and, and complete obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Satajidini, inshallah, you will find me by the grace of God, mina sabiri, among the patients. That means he will accept to be slaughtered. Now, this tradition is con continuous and up upheld by the Prophet وسلم, himself and he said it's highly encouraged. It's highly encouraged to slaughter a ram on the tenth day. That tenth day, uh, there is nothing you can do to please Allah than to shed or to sacrifice a ram or an animal in the sake of sacrifice. That is all the hair. Under each hair is a reward. And before it, uh, the drop, the, the blood would drop on ground, angels of Allah has taken the record of your reward. What they need from you is your good intention and your devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good intentions and devotion. You know, the story of Ibrahim and his obedience to God cut across religion, race, and tribe. Because God has instructed us to be obedient to him. Now, reflecting on this virtue, how can we leverage for our spiritual upliftment? You see, if a believer, or let's say every one of us will think inward and will act upon the scriptures, this story, it is there in the Quran as well as in the Bible. And when you will act upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down as manual, anytime you try to deviate from manual of, uh, let's say, a manufacturer, the device or that car cannot work the way you like it. Now, let us go back. Let us live with our scriptures. The minute you live or you say you will do your life, uh, out of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command you, you will find it very difficult to survive and that is how we experience this crisis as we are seeing. Financial crisis, moral, immoralities, uh, 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 security everywhere and no anybody, no one is getting it easy. But the leads and the followers, leaders and the followers. Now, uh, if we are to leverage from that thing, is to look at it and think you are not prophet ibrahim but the we were asked to copy from them they are the most selected selected and distinct people in the in the whole humanity prophet ibrahim is among the five in the islamic point of view it is among the five eminent prophets now he was tested and submitted and allah confirmed his devotion and and sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You as a believer, I encourage you to look on how will you sacrifice you two. How will you not when we are talking about sacrifice, it's not only what you will give out. Let's say you are dividing the ram into three, giving out one as charity, one as a gift. One mm -hmm. for your family, you can decide to eat it all. What we are saying is not the ram, it's not the meat. What we are saying is for you to sacrifice that amount. You can see now they are saying they are, they are saying the ram price is so high after buying for 600, 800, or 400, or let's say 100,000, and you give it out. Now, the process or the act of giving it out for the sake of Allah, for the sake of reward. For the sake of putting smile in the face of poor and needy, now we want you to translate that not only on the tenth day of Ram, uh, uh, tenth day of Zulhijjah. Tenth day of Zulhijjah is just to mark this one as symbolic. Now we want you to translate it in your day-to-day -day life. Sacrifice. Everybody has his own way to sacrifice to give out. What is what are we trying to say? Is to leave your comfort zone. Is to sacrifice some interest, some happiness, for the sake of humanity, for the sake of your country, for the sake of a betterment of the society you live. A security personnel will sacrifice his sleep to make others sleep. 
he will a, 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 a press gentlemen of the press will sacrifice their happiness their their time their mm. thinking their faculty their their resources their brain behind the scene in order to make sure that somebody somewhere sitting down comfortably looking the wall looking all what is happening in the country in his comfort zone this one also is a sacrifice a leaders leaders have their own way of sacrificing how let me just take one example this is subsidy removed now the followers are trying to pay and buy of this thing there is no issue no any protest no anything now we are asking or advising the leaders to sacrifice also by fulfilling the promises by making life better is also act of sacrifice so everybody has his way and manner to give sacrifice for the betterment of nigeria okay you know aside uh, sacrifice obedience is another virtue which we must embrace uh, always how can we make this part of our lifestyle and worship to god that is because obedient. it's very important yes obedient yes you see uh, obedience is something has to start from the heart. Oh. From the heart, you need to respect and obey what you like, what you uphold. If you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will obey him. Look at it the way the prophets are trying to devote themselves, are trying to show level of belief, level of sacrifice level of what they, 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 they want to attain in terms of thanksgiving, in terms of giving out. Look at the Prophet Sallallahu he has been forgiven what he has done and what he will even do in the forthcoming days. But he used to stand for hours praying. His wife, Omina Aisha, asked, why are you doing like this? He said, Awala Akuna Abdel Shakura, don't you want me to be a thanksgiving somebody? who want to get, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings and the, and the, and the level he, he has. Now, uh, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need one to look and copy from, the, from our pious predecessors, from the prophets, from the uh, messengers, from the companions. Now, they are seeking for Allah's uh, Jannah, that is paradise. You are also seeking the same thing, and you want to be together with them at that time. Then, at that uh, 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 in the day of Kiyama, then do the same thing. It's only two things that will qualify you there: strong belief, that is iman, wal amal saleh, and a righteous actions. So, true righteous actions and translating what you have learned from them. That is how you can gain obedience. Another thing is that two ways: obedience can come from uh, 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 um, seeking the reward and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking Allah's paradise. Now you are trying to seek for his reward and his paradise and you are trying to protect yourself from hellfire. These two things will help you to balance. But if you take only the pleasure side of it, you think that that one is not problem. You just keep on indulging in minor and major sins. And mm -hmm. likewise, if you are just thinking of the hellfire, you'll be scary and you'll not act of so many good things towards, towards your uh, uh, hereafter. So hell is real and we need to change our negative ways. Now let's relate this to a nation building. Can we be selfless as citizens you and see, not allowing our interests to dictate what we do, the right things to do? Now, let me give it clear for you, Elizabeth. Whenever we are talking about nation building, the bottleneck against all, yes, the bottleneck that is standing from any, not, in our, not even our nation, any nation is corruption. Oh. And corruption, when we say corruption, is very wide. It can take, it has so many forms. And it has rooted deep inside people's blood now. Now how can we uh, change the situation, change the narration? Is corruption, the seed of corruption is what you mentioned, selfish interest. Huh. Selfish interest can only be removed, can only be cured, can only be uh, deleted through sacrifice. 
So how can you selflessness? If you can sacrifice the little you have, the happiness you have, the, uh, the time you have, the power you have, the influence you have for the betterment of others. To put smile. Now, you will buy a ram of 200,000 and you ask to, 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 to give it out if you like or to divide it into three. That one is sacrifice. Now you are sacrificing your 200,000. Mm -hmm. Now, we want you also to sacrifice what you have little in your office as a civil servant. In your office or in your this, private organization or your marketplace or your working place. Everywhere you are. You have something to give out for our nation. What is government? We are talking about government. It's you and I. You have your office. I have my office. I have where I stand. I have where I will do. I have where if I decide I can do wrong. And if I decide I can do right. Now everybody should just check in what and see how he can give uh, uh, Nigeria to, the, to be a better nation. Now you are giving out. You are doing your thing. Coming in time. And let me say, tell you, this thing that I'm saying is not only in the offices, even in your, when you are driving. You can see somebody will come and do something in, your, uh, in the front of you. Sometimes you have to just think, if not, you just insult or you can bring uh -huh. very bad words or you yes. have to just give up. Sometimes he will even hit you. So now we need to be upright. We need to change in our characters. We need to think of what people will say about us when we are no more, when we are not there. We need to think of what people, that is of goodness. We need to think of what people will say of bad, negative comment when we are not more. When you are no more in the office, when you are no more in the house, neighborhood, when you are no more alive in this world or in the working place. So these are the things that when you are thinking of them, you will always do the right thing and you'll be obedient. Okay. You know, uh, talking about uprightness, I want to ask as a scholar, you are a scholar, an Islamic scholar. Why is it so hard to sacrifice desires for the will of God? And I ask because the issue of sacrifice relates, cuts across whether you are a Muslim, Christian, or you practice other religions. It relates. So why is it so hard? Why is it so hard to sacrifice for the sake of God? There are a number of factors. And these are the factors, not only me, but even the prophets have been battling with. Anytime people deviate, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants people to live the way he likes. That's why he keeps on sending the prophets. Anytime people deviate, digress from the right path, the right path, he will send messengers of him with the guidance, with the miracles, to come and take people to the right path. This is this is this has been a battle between good and bad, between wrong and right, between prophets and those are against the prophet. Mm. Now, uh, the factors is too many. Some are internal, some are external. Some factors, when we say internal factors, one it can be lack of sound belief. That is, there is no fear of God in the heart of people. Secondly, devil himself. And your mind, sometimes this mind of us needs to be guided throughout, 247, with the scriptures, with what with the divine words. Because we are all, a, a, a human being by nature, their mind needs to re, be at peace, need to be at rest, need to have what they like to, uh, to go away with their, uh, with their, with their selfish interests. So now it needs to be controlled, it needs to be guided to what, what is right. Now, uh, these are also internal, and another that is lack of contentment that resulted at the, at the, at the, at the, at the result of not, not having uh, piety, that is somebody who is not God-fearing. Lack of contentment, that is worldly inclined material things you, are, you want to accumulate, you want to pass your neighbor, you want to pass yeah. your coworker, you want to pass this. So this one is hitting and biting us too much. How can I do it better than this? How can this one is disturbing at a family level? Is disturbing on us in uh, 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 societal level and individual level? So that one, uh, let, me, let me just stop it at that three. Lack of God-fearing, lack of contentment, and devil himself. 
Now, external factors. We have the company that is the friends you keep. Influence you badly more than anything else that you think. They can be your co workers, they can be your friends in the neighborhood, they can be your friends online or offline, they can be your friends in the school. Anywhere you have it, you can get take a very typical example on those are uh, in SS3, SS1, SS, just those in 16, in those teens, teenagers. So you can see how they will be influenced and uh, count. If you have 10 friends, you count five of them are bad, you are one of them. If you have 10 friends and you count five of them, they are good, you are one of them. So it's left you. Now, apart from bad friends, copying the, the, the culture, not even the culture, anything that you see from people there, you want to ask, uh, copy and paste without regulating, without looking onward, inward from our tradition from our religion from our culture from norm from our norms and values have also uh, make it uh, contributed for people to keep on looking and finding way of not to dis uh, not to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay let well, let me comment there before quickly before we talk about the lessons inherent in the festival I often ask religious leaders uh, when we talk about sacrifice and obedience, all are in the holy books. But why is it difficult for us to embrace each other, each other when we talk about religion, tolerating each other? Why is it difficult? Why is it difficult for the both two members, religious members, to tolerate each other? You see, uh, sometimes because of what we are saying, selfish interest from the traditional, uh, from the religious leaders, from the traditional rulers, from the family itself. Sometimes it's because of poverty, sometimes because of ignorance. Let me take Boko Haram as an example. Boko Haram, after poverty, there is nothing contributed to their emergence, their growth and development that wrong or uh, lack of true knowledge. Lack of true knowledge of the scriptures contributed more than 50%. So through understanding Islam the way it is, as we have in Saudi Arabia, as we have been in Dubai, and we have, as we have in everywhere that is Islamic, there is Muslim community, and they are doing well, and they are living and receiving embarrassing uh, visitors, investing in their India, look at Malaysia, look at Pakistan. They have all what developed, and they are Muslim uh, uh, countries. So uh, uh, it's because they have gotten it right. They have, uh, they have the good understanding of Islam. So this one is there. Now I say selfish interest from all those leaders. Selfish interest. You want to be known. You want to be seen. You want to be heard. You want, you want to get it. You want to understand that kind of thing you will seek to corner some information you will seek to uh, ginger your followers to make sure that they are doing things that can easily affect uh, others and we have tolerance in Islam uh, we have so many examples from the Prophet he can tolerate he can tolerate to the extent that he spent 10 years in Mecca under the rule of law of pagans oh. under the rule of law of Meccans Till, is it 10 years? 13 years. He suffered a lot. He, they killed some, his, or some of his members. They killed some of his companions. But when he conquered them, he overpowered them. They are waiting to hear on how day and time they will be killed. He said, Go, I have free you. You are free. Anywhere you are, you are free. This is to tell you how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, teaches uh, tolerance. We can... So now in Islam, uh, they said you have 40 uh, neighborhood in your neighborhood, 40 houses from your right, 40 houses from your left, left from uh, your front, from your back, are all your community, are all your neighbor. Think of it. If Islam want to destroy community or is not tolerant enough, what if, how many of, how, what, do you have a time, have few, how many times do you sit down to think of 40 of your neighbors? Huh. This is, this is a very big assignment. 
So now, uh, it's so, uh, um, it has been established in all the two religions, but I'm saying practicalizing it, putting it into practice. practice. That is where uh, the leaders or the followers having it very difficult. Okay. All right. Finally, Ustaz, beyond the celebration, I believe there are lessons inherent in the festival. Could you share some with us? And how do we look beyond the festival to worship? So, you see, uh, before, uh, beyond the festival, I will just say we should keep the lessons. We have learned the lessons of sacrifice. We have learned the lesson of unity of the Muslim Ummah globally. Mm -hmm. Everybody is giving out sacrifice. If you are in Hajj, you are giving Qurban. You ha we have learned the lessons of thanksgiving for you uh, to afford 200, 300, 50,000, anything, any amount to buy a ram and slaughter it and give it out for the sake of Allah. This one is also a way of give, uh, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his favor. We, can, we also learn the uh, act of putting smile in the face of those uh, in need. Uh, uh, by giving out your sacrifice. Now, let us extend these lessons to our day-to-day -day life. Not only on these three days, t 10 days, the 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th. Not only on these days of festive period of Eid al-Adha. Let us extend it till another Eid al-Adha. Each, ev if each and every one of us will we'll uphold these lessons, oh. I'm sure Nigeria will be a better place, will be a very, in fact, will even pass Dubai. Yes. Why? Because sacrifice from all angles, from yeah. all members of the society, giving out, loving each other, give it, uh, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your uh, means, and above all, seeking and devoting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Definitely, we will not get it wrong when we are in the sight of what Allah SWT wants us to do. He wants us to see us uh, doing it the way Prophet Ibrahim salam, ended well, we will end well. The way Prophet Muhammad salam, ended well, we will end well. And okay. inshallah, we will meet in Jannatul Firdaus. Asalaamu Alaikum. Amen. Ustaz Yaya Garba Al Yolawi, I want to thank you so much for joining us on Insight. Thank you so much. Thank you and God bless you. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. I'm fascinated with the discourse on national monuments and assets and how much is being done to preserve and Look into the language issue. We have turned English to become like a pride value in our own cultural values. It's not cash transfer. It's not a COVID-19. Invasion 1897 was a deliberate, deliberate tactic. You know, many of these people attempt. coming to the urban areas now. These are applications. Um, there are terms and conditions. That of course, mean, um, it is sense. the union of uh, two people, a man and a woman coming together. My name is Namdi Odipo. And I'm Elizabeth Omori. Educational deprivation is not the end of the world. Agencies and stakeholders to proactively tackle these challenges. Women in most countries of the world constitute about 50% of registered voters. Kevin Williams reporting for Deadline 360. In Jaws, Caleb Gochin, Deadline 360. Deadline 360. Shidi Okrafo. For Deadline 360. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye. Reporting for Deadline Trees. I am Omosola Omojola. Thanks for tuning in. Heads of state representatives from international institutions and civil society attended a finance summit hosted by French President Emmanuel Macron in Paris, France. Their objective is to develop a new global financial system for vulnerable countries to be better equipped to combat poverty and climate change. The forum also provided a platform to debate changes to multilateral finance institutions in the face of climate change and other development challenges. 
How favorable are the resolutions raised and what is Africa's position? We will find out as our guest, Air Vice Marshal Akube Iyamo, President Association of Environmental Practice and Climate Change Experts, will analyze the sidelines of the just concluded finance summit. Air Vice Marshal, thank you so much for joining us on Insight. Thank you for having me and thank you, uh, viewers. Yeah. All right, the summit is over with so much debatable issues. Could you let us hear your thoughts on the summit? Yes, thank you very much. <clears throat> the, the summit was very timely. It has been on since COP26 when the Amotli, president of Barbado, came out with the, Bri the Bridgestone Initiative. So coming back, after, in, in, after COP27 uh, and, uh, and the, the, the G20 uh, summit with the mixed result, President Macron came up with the solid position of, uh, of, of taking stock of ways, of needs and ways of expressing financial solidarity with the Global South. Now, he goes first of all, he, 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 he wanted to restore the financial space because of countries who are experiencing short-term short financial difficulties. He also wanted to mobilize uh, private financing for, for countries, for poor countries. He also want, he, he also want to encourage mobilization of uh, resources into green infrastructure and also mobilize resources to, to, for, for, for climate change because most of these countries in the global south are experiencing, are experiencing climate change and they are not able to find resources to meet it at all. Hmm. Now, the, 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 the multilateral agencies, the IMF, the World Bank and all, they were set up. When they were set up, most of these countries were not in existence. They were not in existence. And now, I want to meet the new reality now. What do you do? The private financing, the private equity, you have to bring them in. And the, 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 the four resolutions and the four key areas that were, that were mentioned, Nigeria ranks very, very high among them. Ranks very, very high among them. Now, what do we do? They've been there. You know, he, it's, 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 it's a question of nothing. It's a multilateral agenda that have to do with development, have to deal with debt, and have to deal with climate change. Now, if most of the countries that are also in you know, with, with, uh, with climate change are also debt ridden they have, they have told their development, and the, 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 the UNDP have found out that because of the financial space, which has, been, which has shrunk over the years, they are not able to meet human resource development. Hence the need for this massive mobilization of resources. And again, too, there's a new world order. People have to choose between poverty now, yes. poverty, and climate change. Mm -hmm. Be because it, it, they have to survive first. Mm. They have to survive first. And most of, most of the areas that, that used to enhance their, 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 their living before are all going down. Are all going down. Look at, look at your, the, uh, the lakes across the world. But look at the, 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 the Lake Chad. Look at the Lake Chad. You see, it has shrunk almost, almost one-sixth of, of its current volume. And that is where 90% of the world's uh, uh, fresh water is. And 140,000 uh, 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 um, ecosystems and the, 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 the biodiversity, they all exist there. So, Nigeria's voice was very loud. The president spoke very, very loud on the, uh, 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 during the conference. But we have to give, we have to operationalize it at home. We have to operationalize it at home. It is, see, the president has spoken. What are we doing? Are we just going to do it after that we forget? South Africa was there. You, I bet you, you, you will soon hear. South Africa will be, will, 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 will be keen into all the benefits that comes out of it. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the highlights of the yeah. summit, uh, including uh, the confirmation that richer countries will likely hit a long overdue target of providing $100 billion uh, annually in climate change finance, uh, in climate finance uh, rather, to poorer countries. What does this translate uh, for Nigeria and other countries? See, this, this one is, is, is a song that I'm sung every year. It's Marrakesh, everything. We'll be there. I say again, we've been in the UNFCCC since 1994. We ratified it in 2004. Mm -hmm. What have we benefited? 
Because we have not, we have, we have never shown seriousness like every other country has done. We have never shown. Now, you, the, the UAE and the UK, they are going for Ministry of Climate Change. That shows the high level engagement. Because the climate, the, 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 the climate environment now is no longer activism. It is now, it, 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 it is now knowledge, skill, and competence. Hmm. And we must be very strict with our values. We must be very strict with our values because now, how are we mobilizing private equity? Are we mobilizing private equity? Hmm. We are, I mean, the, the, the day that we are doing now is preventing us from investing into all the other areas. The, what what, what the, 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 the president of France is telling you that, look, we want to make funds available to enable you to do so many things because we have seen that you, because when all this started, COVID-19, the war, the war in Ukraine, has created a new body on this on, on these vulnerable countries with virtually no fund that is free for them to use for other development again. So we have to key in. We have to key in and we have to we have to unpack a whole lot of things. Particularly two areas. Two areas. The, 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 the private equity. What are we doing about it? We have multi multinational companies around here. What is their contribution to climate change? What is their contribution? They, you see, they emit most of these uh, 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 carbon emissions and all. What is their contribution? We have to look at that area. It is not climate, climate change council. No, because Nigeria is, 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 is well struck by climate change, we have to go beyond that. It has to be at the strategic level, the president, the president level. The president level. We have to go for it. There, there's nothing wrong in us having the Minister of Climate Change now. It's the, 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 the little, little sub, sub uh, uh, ministries, sorry, sub uh, committees and all, it's not going to help us. You see, you see what Egypt is doing. You see what South Africa is doing. You see what Guinea is doing. They are all, they are, they are all getting into these finances and bringing it out. It is not funds that are somewhere, that are stuck somewhere, you just write a check and they give you. No, okay. you, must, you must create a framework that they can relate it. But we must be very strict with our values. Be very, very strict. What is Barbados doing? What is the Association of Small Island States? What are they doing? What that are they doing? That they have become so modest. That yeah. the, 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 the international community is looking in that, in that direction. See, patronage will never help us. We need to come in now straight. Come in straight into climate change, get the best brain. We need people now, like I always say, we need people that can talk with Attenborough, John Kerry, Agor, on the table of, for, for, for climate change. Because what are you bringing to the table? Hi, our 893 show, uh, uh, show line, what are we doing with it? Hmm. Now, all the, most of the states in Nigeria, they all have their mineral, mineral particularly lithium. The lithium. The EU is going to spend 35 trillion US dollars on renewable energy. Oh. This is one of the decisions there. They are mobilizing funds for renewable energy. And we have a lot of it in Zampara, uh, uh, across the, the, the front line states. What are we doing? We have to go into our laws. Me, uh, uh, for me, I am convinced that states will begin to have Ministry of Solid Minerals to unpack most of these things. When they unpack there, they begin to look at it. Yeah. The federal government will now, will, will, will now take overall control. Let the states begin to do it. Um, bring it up just like the, the way they, 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 they are doing agriculture at all. You know, if, 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 if it's in the exclusive list, find or pass the law and take it to the concurrent list. What we, what we do now, what we are looking for now is finances. Well, finances. Talking, talking about finances, the World Bank and others agreed at the summit that they would start adding uh, clauses to lending terms that allow vulnerable states to suspend debt repayments when natural disasters strike. With this agreement, shouldn't Africa brace up to meet her demands and responds to disasters? Yes. They will, they, in COP27, there was a promise that was made that by March this year, they, they, they will have their first meeting and the fourth will, will go out. It is not as easy as that. You are talking about people's funds. That's, 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 and when, this, when this, all these agencies were created, there was nothing like a, a, a Ukraine war, there was nothing like COVID-19, and there was nothing like a, a climate change. So it's going to be a whole lot of issues. It's a potpourri. You, you now, what, what, what are you doing? They are not coming to meet you 
they are not going to, coming to meet you in your comfort zone. No. You have to struggle to go and meet them. Hmm. You have to struggle to go and meet them. They, they've told you uh, 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 most of these things. Well, it is to create assets for you to have fun. Creating assets means that you have a requirement. You have a, I mean, you, 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 you have a responsibility to meet the requirement that they are going to set. It is not fun that is, that is, it is not slush fun that is going to be on the table. You just come, you, you, you pick and choose. No. No. We are, we, we are so much in the with flooding. That is our area that, that we can converse. Last week, my heart goes to the people that say, that, that live in the trade more estate. Mm, who have had to who have had to suffer that because of inaction, inaction. Over the you see, the relief line, the relief line through Abuja is one line that goes to Guagualada and, and empty into River Niger. Who approve those? Who approve that estate? Huh. Well, on the relief line, sitting on the relief line. Now the problem is the problem is now. If you solve that problem, you take the problem to other estates. So it has to be a whole, a, a whole approach now to solve it. And the people that are, the, the people that are losing property every day, what are they getting? After every year, everybody goes back because nobody gets punished. Nobody gets punished. Like a recurring incident. It's a recurring incident because we know that no, everybody will get away with it. If they know that they're going to be sanctioned, who, who, approved, who approved that estate? Who approved it? That's and event. what action have you taken? Since this thing has been, or when I, since I was, uh, uh, director of Search and Rescue in Emma, then at EDG. I've visited that place so many times. You see mark on houses. What is, with the mark on houses, what, are, what, what are you doing there? To be demolished. Okay, uh, the summit held against uh, another issue, uh, against the backdrop of criticism that the world is moving far too slowly in addressing climate change issues. You are an expert in this area. How so? Yes, the world will move so slowly because the countries that are affected, the global south, they are bedeviled with other issues. <laughs> yes. With debt, mm. with, with, with hunger, with poverty, with a whole lot of things. Now, like last year, we took $890 billion from our envelope budget to solve, to solve the problem of flooding. Did you see anything on ground? There's, there's nothing on ground. Now, the flooding has started again. You see, it's the same circle. It's the same circle. We kept warning since September last year, after the flood stage, flood stage is what happened after the flood had receded. That look, the snow in the global north is too much. Oh. That we should prepare for massive flooding. Nothing was done. Nothing was done. The first is because the Secretary General of the UN have said that look, the early warning system, he is going to be he is going to make sure that everybody that is in the vulnerable area is going to have an early warning system. What do we do? It's not there. The problem with flooding is where do you take these people to? When they are flooding, our agriculture is decimated every year. Now, we are also dealing with the problem of uh, IDPs. In the world, now you have 35.8 30, million IDPs, and almost, almost 3 million of them are in Nigeria. Are we, they are not reducing. They are not reducing. So, we cannot, we cannot actually do a whole lot of things for climate change. We say, look, we were able to do 20% on aided NDC, that's money, the time contribution. The rest we need, we need assistance. We need assistance. The people have to be put in place now that have large heart for climate change. Large heart for climate change. Who can unpack most of these things and reach out? When you are going to talk about most of these things, then they should be able to contribute meaningfully. It should not be used. It should not be used anymore to say, okay, uh, uh, this is my friend, come in, come and handle it. This is for my uh, uh, town, come in, come and handle it. No, no. There are some areas that no matter how, how compassionate you are, they have to be for people who have the large mind for it. They have to be for experts. Hmm. For experts. We should, move, we should move towards creating a ministry for climate change. For climate change. Yes. Okay, the, 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 the summit also focused on uh, poverty reduction in Africa and on the side of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Chinobu actually reiterated the nation's uh, position to liberalizing uh, the economy to attract more investments uh, into the country. Yes, yes. Uh, if, 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 if that was a very, very strong point in the right, in the right direction. Okay. 
but with one hundred what with two hundred and thirty three million or there about multi dimensionally poor. It's a very, it's going to be a very huge problem. Okay. If you get the multi dimensionally poor, they are they, they are intangibles now. They are intangibles. The envelope budget, yes, part of ways of dealing with climate change is the removal of self feeding, which we have done, mm -hmm. which we have done, very commendable. Now, part of the way of dealing with uh, uh, poverty across the world is waste management. For every, for every one ton of waste, you recycle. Eh? You are getting one kilowatt of electricity mm -hmm. and 10 jobs. 10 jobs. We have not looked at that area. Well, ministry agencies and departments are not going to sit down again and create jobs. No. The, 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 one of the four key areas, mobilizing a, a, a private equity funds, we have to look at that. We have to look at that. People have to see, if you contribute in destroying the environment, you must also contribute in restoring it. Yes. Look at our ocean. We wait. 894 kilometer shoreline. That's a lot. The green and the blue economy. Now, the, 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 the EU is telling you now that they are going to raise materials. Materials for, for, for uh, electric vehicles. Six times. And uh, 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 renewable energy, nine times. A reference was made to finding new avenues for international taxation as well as other uh, Bridgetown initiative requests, including offering investors a foreign exchange guarantees. Wouldn't this be another means of scaring investors away? Government, government cannot fully leave an economy. They guide it. They create the enabling environment for people to be able to come in. To come in. Now, I, I school in the Philippines. When energy there, there's, when you live in a house and you pay for energy, by the time it is finished, nobody is coming to talk to you. Okay. It just goes off on its own. Mm -hmm. But here, when you move around, when you move around the, 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 the country land, I mean the, the hinterland, you see, you see light being on 24 hours of the day, burning, burning. But how the Philippines solve their electricity? They, they got investors in and said, come, produce this electricity. Government will buy it. Government will buy it and begin to sell it to the, to, uh, 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 to the citizens. They, 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 they started gradually, gradually, gradually until they, 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 they eradicated uh, 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 lack of electricity. Look, economies run in the night. So, there's no economy that will develop without electricity. Now, we must have mixed energy. Now, we must create mixed energy. Now we have the materials for the, the, the lithium battery is so much in it is so much in Zafara State. What are we doing about it? That is yeah. that that is what is that is the, 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 the fundamental item for, for, for renewable the renewable yeah, energy. Well, we have to go we have to, we have to unpack most of this most of these laws. Unpack them and make sure that it is friendly to the state, it is friendly to people because of investment. Because of investment, because you have opened up the economy, you also have to open up a whole lot of area. And the core area that everybody is deriving benefit from now is climate change, renewable energy, biodiversity, a, a blue economy, green economy. We are not maximizing this thing. We are still relying on oil. Oil is going. Oil is going. We have 206 trillion cubic feet of gas and 600 at the optimum. What are we using? So if we have to consider the agreements, what recommendations would you make? Our debt, we have to convert for it. We have to convert for it as a means of uh, 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 our, carbon, our carbon footprint. Our carbon footprint is very, very low. If that is the case, we will begin to, we will begin to find solutions, sustainable solutions to our carbon footprint. So give us, in, 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 in essence, debt I mean, debt concession, or uh, well, nobody wants to hear debt forgiveness anymore. <laughs> then, private equity finance. Let us mobilize that. Let us mobilize. We have a lot of companies around here. Now, there's only a carbon tax now. Carbon tax. Let's go for that. You, mu you must pay your carbon tax. And again, to see, the central bank of countries now are becoming involved. 
So there must be there must be sincere disclosure. That is why you need people with a mind for climate change to come in, to come in, help you manage your environment. So that they know where they are putting their money. They know where they are putting their money because if there are no disclosures, they will not put in their money there. It's coming from a country where there's where there are so many disclosures and coming to a country where there's none. Where there's none, you just they, they just operate and they are known. Then two, investment in renewable energy. Yes, very good, very, very good step in the right direction. That rural, rural electrification. Yes, if if you are electrifying the rural areas, you don't need to come and sing it on TV. People will see light in the rural area in the night. That means it works. Mm -hmm. It works. Then the fund for climate change. See, get let your climate change uh, uh, council. May, but me, I will advocate for for a ministry because of the strength now because. We 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 we, uh, 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 we have short-term difficulties in finances, so we we we, we need to mobilize uh, 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 public equity, uh, uh, public finances. So we need a body at the strategic level to be able to do this, to be able to do this conveniently and seamlessly. And seamlessly. Reverend Marshal Akube Yam, I want to thank you so much for coming to enlighten us. Thank you very much for your thoughts. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Mm. I'm fascinated with the discourse on national monuments and assets and how much is being done to preserve and Look into the language issue. Thing. We have turned English to become like a pride value in our own cultural values. It's not cash transfer. It's not a COVID-19. Invasion 1897 was a deliberate Deliberate you know, many of these people coming to the open areas now. These are applications. Um, there are terms and conditions. That of course, mean, um, it is sense. the union of uh, two people, a man and a woman coming together. My name is Nam Diodipo. And I'm Elizabeth Omori. And violence always. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.